Итак, представляю вам Роберт Шольд. Please welcome. So, hi everyone. Uh, this is Code FX. I'm Nikolai. I'm here with Robert Schulte, uh, chairman of Maven. You just told me, and I forgot again. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, I'm the chairman of uh, the Apache Maven project. Yeah. I would say you're not just core committer; you're hardcore committer to uh, the Maven project. Yes. Right? One, um, one, one of the most active uh, committers. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. So, thank you for your work. Thank everybody. I heard there's a really big team behind you of dozens and dozens of uh, full-time employees. Looks all too <laughs> depth. Looks all too depth. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that part because it's, I think it's really important to understand. Everybody knows how important Maven is to the ecosystem, yes. but I think very few people understand on how few shoulders yes. uh, so that rests. So uh, the Apache Mave project, uh, it is an open source project uh, hosted by Apache Software Foundation uh, and it's really uh, only by, uh, maintained by volunteers. Mm. So there's no company behind it and right now we have about five to ten active committers. And wow. if you take a look at uh, the number of users uh, there was this uh, report uh, posted last week by SNCC and they yeah. said about 60% of all Java developers are using it. If you know that uh, there are about 12 million uh, Java developers Every worldwide. Every time you ask Oracle, it's one million more. Like <laughs> I really? I think it was like nine million. I feel like it was like nine million. Well, the last time I ago. asked, uh, they <laughs> yeah, said that's, twelve. Yeah, no, it's yeah. right. They yes. do that. No, yes. Who knows? Boy, how they come up with that number? But yes, yes. definitely. Yeah, lot so, of people. So, uh, and if you take a look at Maven itself, I, I, we're not only developing Maven, but we also have about fifty Maven plugins, and there are uh, several libraries uh, we mm. also maintain. So. The whole Maven project, I think it's almost 100 uh, projects we, uh, we maintain. Do you have a rough estimation of lines of code? No, but I should know that. That would be interesting. Like, yes. is it, is it would, I guess it would be in the millions, of course. Absolutely. Would it tens of millions? Who knows? Would Probably. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Five people. So if you know Maven well, and you feel like maybe you can help, do that, please. Absolutely. Like, there's tons yes. of issues. It's all online like with any regular open source project. Yes, so we I will share uh, the, the link, of course, with you. So yeah, we'll just put it uh, here. Yeah, we will. Yeah. So, but you want to talk, uh, tell us something about life cycle? Life cycle. Life cycle. Yes. Life cycles. You said uh, we need to have a, a nice topic, and I yeah. thought, well, let's talk about life cycles. I wanted to start on improving life cycle uh, support, but then Java 9 came, <laughs> so I had to switch to the whole module support. Yeah. Uh, well, that's now kind of finished, so I can go back to the whole uh, yeah. uh, part. So, there are a couple of things I want to improve. Uh, let's start with. Um, uh, install and deploy. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally what you do is uh, uh, if you release a plugin it is calling deploy and first it installs your project to your local repository mm -hmm. and then it's going to be deployed. But if you have a uh, Maven multi-module project and somewhere in the middle it breaks then you already have some of those uh, artifacts in your local repository. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. And that can cause issues, of course, yeah. because it shouldn't be there. It should be there at the end. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. So, so um, what were tr the one of the ideas is is to uh, that you have to choose for either install or deploy, mm -hmm. because sometimes it makes sense to just do an installment yeah. for your local system, but if you do a deploy, almost never you do want to do an install. Yeah. Okay. So. So I had this problem when I was well, problem. I had this situation as well uh, when I was working on migrating projects to Java nine, right? So then you, uh, you build the thing on nine, and then by default I always do put Maven clean install there. So yeah. then then it solves like uh, three quarters of the artifacts that work. And then one breaks on nine, and I was like, okay, well, but it doesn't work on eight. Now to figure out how to go back to eight, and then mm -hmm. I realized I can't run any of the code because I just installed a bunch of bytecode level exactly. what, for fifty three or something <laughs> artifacts into my <laughs> repository, and I have to go back and build the entire thing with eight. All right. Uh, which for that specific project, ignoring not running tests, just Maven clean install, sorry, but just Maven, yeah, Maven clean install process resources as well, that uh, takes a lot of time. Yes. Um, for us, it takes like 10 minutes. Just that, no tests, just compiling stuff. Okay. <laughs> that's, so. that's long. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. I mean, it's a big project, but the point yes. is that then, then you realize, ah, damn, I forgot that. That would be nice there to, yes. be, to make it easier to um, have the entire build run all these artifacts without installing them. Yes. Because, yeah. So uh, also, and this might be uh, interesting in this case, is that we're going to divide the life cycle in uh, some pre-phases, main phases, and post-phases. Okay. So pre-phases would be, in this case, uh, only run the validate on all the um, multi, multi project first mm -hmm. to verify if the project is valid. Okay. 
After that, we're going to run uh, the compile test, etc. So the main block, and in the end, once that is done for all yeah. the uh, modules, then we're going to distribute it. Mm. Uh, so that would be the install or deploy. Yeah, so that would be more like an atomic step in the end instead of yes, exactly. smeared across. The right now, this is done uh, after every uh, at the yeah. end of every uh, run. So yeah. I have a question. Um, since Java 9, do you have this multi-module compilation? And uh, since just starting the compiler, starting the compiler plugin has kind of an overhead, I wondered whether build tools could, uh, could start support that, but it really doesn't fit well into the Maven no. lifecycle because it would be, it goes module by module, mm -hmm. and this multi-module compilation would basically just do all the compilation for the entire thing in one step. Is that something that, even if it would be possible, Maven would be interested in, or is it just not that important? Uh, for me, it's not that important. Okay. No, uh, uh, one of the things you will hit is uh, every Mave module needs to have a group ID and artifact ID, mm -hmm. and you cannot solve that if you do uh, a compilation of multiple Java modules at once, and all those modules need to have a group ID and an artifact ID, a unique group ID and artifact ID. I can't quite follow. Why do you need for the compilation? Why do you? Well, uh, in the end, you want mm -hmm. to distribute these modules, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, true. So they need to have a unique uh, coordinate, a MAVE coordinate. No, that's true, but uh, the w if you do this multi-module, first of all, so the you don't have to use, actually have to build modules that way, right? I think. Or do you, in Java 9, with the multi-module compilation, do you actually have to build modules, I right? I think so, yes. Yeah, true. Uh, that's all, yeah, that all yes. of course, for most projects, that's already something that they're not doing yet. Uh, which is fine, you don't have to yeah. use modules on 9, no. remember. <laughs> But um, right, that only works for modules. Yeah. But then you would, but still, still get it though. You can comp you can compile all the modules at once, and then you get and then you get all the bytecode separated by uh, by folders, and then mm -hmm. you could just just you know. I guess it's not, not that simple. No, to start packaging no. that up. No. So we had a talk with this with Mark Reinhold, mm. and he also says that this uh, doesn't make sense in a Maven world mm. to do it. Yeah. But uh, the JDK itself, it is using their own yeah. uh, scripts. So they needed to have something to build their whole uh, JDK at once, yeah. uh, having these modules. So that's yeah. why they introduced it. And you can really tell that this is uh, tightly bound to their specific structure, right? The whole idea of this, uh, I, th I think that's not, it's not applicable to the wider world, is the idea they have this top level source folder, and then you have module name folders below mm -hmm. that. Uh, how the JDK does it, which is fine for the JDK, yeah. I guess. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying anything about that, but it's really, this is the default and it's baked into some of these tools uh, more closely than it should be, and this is totally not the default for every project no. out there. And I think it shouldn't be either. I think most of the projects live much, much better with having the project at top level, and then have uh, production sources and test sources and documentation and yeah. build tool configuration and, and CI configuration, all of that uh, side by side for each project yeah. instead of having top level source and then all the modules and then top level test source and all the modules. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, you talk, talk, talked about changing or working on the life cycle. You also told me that uh, you're planning Maven 4. Would that be a Maven 4 thing? Or would, could um, that go to 3? I think we can still put this in Maven 3. Okay. Because in the end, it shouldn't affect people. It should uh, only improve the experience with it. Okay. So, But we do have some ideas with Maven 4 and even uh, Maven 5. Uh, and Maven 5, uh, the reason for it is uh, everybody knows there's one element in the POM you always have to specify, and that's the model version. Yeah. And it, its value is? It's not what? Oh, yeah. Its value is 4.0.0. It's, it's a thing I copy paste, so I don't really know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's there's one original POM, and everybody just copies. Oh, and then probably. I, I always copy paste stuff from yes. somewhere else. So I have one POM in my system that I actually <laughs> wrote, and all the other ones are just yes. like copy paste changed version of this. Yes. So we are thinking about finally adding some elements to the POM file, yeah. uh, which comes with new challenges. Uh, but we think that Maven 5 would be the best moment to do that, so we can change the model version to 5, and then they're suddenly in sync. Ah, okay. Is so that the reason why you're planning already on 5? Because yes. I found that curious. That yes. Okay. We actually thought about skipping 4, just huh? to go from 3 to 5, okay. to, to make it in sync. But we think we have uh, to make some steps before we can move to 5. Okay. So we are uh, we expect that we have a small number of Maven 4 releases and then go to 5. Okay, but s tell us something that will, be, that will be in 4 that uh, we're all going so to be so happy about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one, uh, we, we need to prepare this stuff yeah. and th the, the main issue we have is that right now the POM file you write yourself is exactly the same that is being deployed to yeah. the repository. Mm -hmm. 
uh, even though much of that information is not interesting anymore. For mm. instance, the build section, yeah. you don't need it anymore once it is uh, published in the, yeah. in the repository. Uh, so we want to improve this build section, uh, uh, and that means that uh, we need to change the file once it is being uploaded. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to generate a new file, and we're going to call it consumer pom. Uh, so this is just a, uh, a POM version 4.0.0, so everybody can still use it. But on your own system, uh, we can introduce new elements or something like okay. that. Uh, one example uh, maybe everybody knows is about uh, the parent. So if you have, have a look at the parent, you always have to specify uh, the group ID, the artifact ID, the version. Even though if you uh, have a relative path, which points normally to the folder, above uh, this project. Uh, and the reason for it is that once uh, this POM file is being deployed, it is not aware of the relative path sure, anymore. Yeah. So that's why you need to specify the version. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if um, Maven can calculate that for you? Yeah. So that, that's possible once we separate this uh, build POM with the consumer POM. Ah, okay, yeah, true. Right. So that means that we finally can get rid of the, the required version, yeah. just only specify the, the relative path. Yeah. And prob I, I think we should keep the group ID and artifact ID just to check that you are really referring to the right mm. parents. Yeah. And once uh, we are going to do the install or deploy, it will replace the relative path with a version. Yeah. And then it should work as expected. Yeah, so, so I mean, the, the not having to put the version there anymore is, of course, just a, just a small change for what you're saying. Yes. It's like we need, uh, we first we need the separation of consumer POM and build POM, so to speak. Yes. And yes. Uh, once we have that, then we can work more of these smaller changes. Yes, so this one is, is quite interesting because you don't have to change the, 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 the POM version. Mm. It still fits in the current XML, so no yeah. new elements, so, okay. so yeah. that's nice. So why is that, um, we talked about this uh, when we talked about the module system a couple, mm. I think last year or two years ago. Uh, when I asked, like, what could there be new elements? They said, like, new elements are really are, are, are a problem. It's not something you can easily introduce. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so, the POM file is not only used by Maven. Yeah. So, uh, there are a lot of other tools that are reading this POM file. And uh, even though there is an XSD uh, to verify if, if, if this XML f fits, um, we don't know if everybody really checks uh, this. So, okay. if, this, if this validates in the XML. Mm. So once we introduce new elements, uh, we don't know what the, these tools are going to do. Okay. Did you do any? Um, like did you do to try to survey this? Did you try to find out whether this kind of defensive approach um, is necessary, or is just? Or do you think this ecosystem is too large to actually make that analysis? It's just yes, it is really, really too large. Okay. And so many tools, and still, uh, uh, some people are on old versions of Maven or mm. Ant or. Uh, you can name any any tool that r needs to read the sure. uh, the pom file. Yeah, I mean, they all collide in the in the artifact repository, right? So if if I would if you would change that, and then somebody still uses I don't know Maven two or something, yes. then uh so uh, we will always deploy a pom file in the current uh, 4.0.0 yeah. format forever, <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> but we what we can do is we can introduce new files, and this yeah. is one of the things. We also think about for uh, Maven 5. Uh, we are thinking about uh, a file, right now it is called Project uh, Dependency Tree. Uh, and the reason for it is that all the logic behind uh, dependency resolution is now inside Maven itself, mm -hmm. which doesn't make sense. So now it's suddenly uh, the, the tool itself needs to define uh, how dependencies should be resolved. So we want to make this explicit in a, in, a in, in a new file. So what exactly would be in that file then? Uh, just all just the direct and indirect dependencies. Indirect ones as well? Yes. Oh, you, that, sorry, that would be, I mean, that's the result in the end. That's yes. not something, oh, no, because we talked about this already, yes. uh, and I didn't quite get it now, I guess. Yes. So I thought this would be something that I, that I as a, as the maintainer of a project, use. But you're saying, no, no, this is, some, this is a result of the build process yes. in the end. OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the logic, r which is right now in Maven, yeah. all the, the resolution stuff, it will be more explicit in this new file. Okay. So with this file, you have all the information you need. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to know more about Maven, you should definitely follow Robert on Absolutely. Twitter. And uh, you are 
Robert R.F. Schulte? R.F. Schulte. R.F. Schulte, yeah. But there will be links in the description box to all of this. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, we'll get, I'll get Robert to answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And uh, we're now going to go outside and enjoy St. Petersburg. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh great, more steps. More steps. <laughs> yeah, definitely worth it. This is the zoom I can get. But it's digital zoom, right? So that doesn't matter, doesn't count. Everybody busy with their phones. Yeah. So that was great, wasn't it? Yes, Robert, tell about the Winter Palace again. So yeah, this is the Winter Palace. <laughs> Ta da! So Robert somehow became our tour guide. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.